my, you know, certainly my role here is to help to ensure that our students have the best and safest learning environment uh, that we can. And I love the fact the way that I get these alerts on a daily basis that I'm able to go in and customize uh, very specific alerts. So it's not just the initial notification, it's the ongoing observation and watching what's going on. Hi everybody, my name is James Neufeld. I'm the uh, CEO and founder here at Samdesk. And today we're talking to yet another one of the Samdesk power users. And one of the reasons that we love doing, you know, these these series and these conversations is really two parts. One is, you know, we're continually inspired by all of the amazing work and stories that we hear from our users. And oftentimes the work that our users do is is a lot lesser uh, known to the, the general public or even just other kind of users within Samdesk. So it's a great privilege uh, for, for me to have these conversations and for us to even just here at Samdesk to hear some of these stories that we hear from, from our users all the time. So wanted to put a spotlight on that. Uh, and secondly, uh, one of the things that we'd love to do here is just unpack the use case of how our platform is helpful uh, to varieties of different use cases and, and users. You know, even us as the platform developers here at Samdesk, we're continually surprised at all the different ways that our platform is being used and deployed in different ways. We want to kind of unpack some of those stories on the show here today. So with that, let's jump in. Uh, I'm really excited to be chatting with Paul Hildreth. Paul is the Director of Safety and Security at the Fulton County School District. Paul, thanks so much for chatting with me today. Uh, great to have you on. Hey, thanks, James. Good to see you again. Uh Great. Well, let's jump right in, Paul. Uh, I would love to understand. Uh, tell us a little bit uh, about your role at Fulton County. Well, James, as a director of safety and security, uh, my, you know, certainly my role here is to help to ensure that our students have the best and safest learning environment uh, that we can. And, you know, and that's every day. And, and we know that, uh, you know, studies have shown that kids, uh, when they feel safe, they learn more and they learn greater you know, with greater abilities. And so it just gives them that level of comfort to know that the, that they're safe and sound when they're at schools. And so, uh, you know, in a very large school district, that's a challenge in, in many cases to with the things that go on on a daily basis. Um, a lot of it's social media based, um, a lot of it just physical things and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it's uh, it's a never ending job to and this is one of the great ways, uh, the things that we do with Fulton County Schools to help ensure our kids and students are first. Amazing. Talk to us a little bit about that footprint, right? Because I think you have, yeah, it's it's a large school district. You've got a, a lot of locations and moving parts, right? Describe, if you can, a little bit about the, the footprint and some of the complexities of, of, of your op operations. Yeah, so we have about 106 schools in our district. Um, I'm going to try to draw you a visual map. If you think of the city of Atlanta and you think of a circle, there's a, the 285 is our highway that goes around the city of Atlanta. Everything north of that and south of that inside of Fulton County are Fulton County schools. So uh, the only the APS, Atlanta Public Schools, is kind of what's inside of that 285 circle. Um, but it's about 86 miles from our farthest north school to our farthest south school. So you can imagine uh, having to even respond and going through the city of Atlanta at any point in time could be uh, quite challenging, especially with traffic and then things of that nature. So um, we, we've got about 89,000 students in our district, um, amongst all of those schools, about 14,000 employees, and uh, just a, you know, just a great place, but sometimes geographically challenged, if you will, with how we can work in the district. Well, Paul, I mean, I think we deal with a lot of, you know, supply chain companies, and we think about, you know, really large multinational organizations, all the, you know, really large staff counts, all the moving parts and the nodes, and just the complexities of just keeping those things operationally smooth and efficient and safe and secure altogether. You know, the, the footprint you're describing is, you know, as large or if not larger than a lot of, you know, large, you know, multinational corporations that you would think of having all these complexities uh, within your school district. Yeah, it, it really is. There's, there's not a lot of differences. There's more similarities. It's just the geography changes it. Uh, you know, if you look at a, a corporate client with a, a hundred headquarters buildings or, you know, a hundred based buildings across the country, they may be separated ge you know, geographically the same way we might be in Fulton County, just not as far. But we still have those same, you know, internal challenges, the same uh, threats, you know, those same opportunities to, you know, to kind of focus on. So uh, the good news for us is that, you know, we are not separated, you know, by states or things like that. We just have one county. Awesome. 
So, Paul, we'll unpack all of that. I think we want to dig into some of the the challenges and and hopefully some of the areas that Soundesk has been able to help. But before we get down that path, would love to understand. So, you're you know you know director of safety and security there. Let's back up just maybe one or two steps before we kind of go the full deep dive, and just love to understand you know why it is that you do what you do, Paul. You know that's that's a great question, and I, I know you can probably see the picture behind me, and and, and the frame is my daughter and my wife. And you know, I think all of us have some type of relationship with schools, whether it's a, a, a child, whether it's a grandchild, um, a sibling, you know, someone that you know has somebody in a school system today and, and, and you know, in a learning environment. And so education impacts all of us in, in many ways. We find that kids will spend, in many cases, more time at a school potentially than they do even at home when they're awake, of course. Uh, you know, so... That's a valuable part of their day. So we, we try to, you know, encapsulate that in terms of safety and security. And, and when I look at that, that's my passion, right? That's my drive. My passion is to, is to make sure that we're providing that level of opportunity for everyone to, to learn to their potential. And the best way we can do that is for them to feel safe. And so, um, you know, I've, you can't see them, but I wear a pair of green shoes every day and that they're, they're called uh, Chucks. I didn't even know what they were called prior to this, but um, there was a little girl that um, was involved in the Uvalde shooting, and uh, and she had uh, her name. Her name was Maite Rodriguez. Rodriguez, and Maite had uh, wanted a pair of green Converse, and so her mom had bought her these shoes. And uh, when after the shooting, those shoes became the only way her parents were able to identify her body, and so. Um, I see that as a passion for me, right? To, to, to certainly respect and show honor to Maite and her classmates that lost their life that day. But um, also Maite had drawn a heart on her shoes and her mom had asked her, Maite, why did you, why did you draw a heart on your shoes? And she said, because I love them. And this little girl had passion. She, you know, she knew what she wanted to do in life and she was there every day and she loved learning. And so, um, you know, my daughter, who is much older than that picture behind me at this point, she's actually in college. But she wants to be a veterinarian. And I had said to her, draw a heart on my shoes. And so I've worn these shoes every day since that time, you know, since that happened in Uvalde to remind me consistently of, of how important school safety is. And, and like I said, and the heart on my shoes is for my daughter. So that gives more purpose and meaning to me. And so, and people ask me the question. So it's kind of funny that I've never had anyone ask me questions about my shoes before in my entire life until I started wearing green chucks. And they're a lime green. Trust me, you can't miss them. But it gives me an opportunity to share my story, if you will, about the passion and just how important school safety is and how important every one of us, you know, including you, James, and your team, and everybody really needs to wrap themselves around in all safety and security in our schools. Amazing to hear all of that, Paul, I think just underscores, you know, it's the hidden layer of, of things that we don't think about. I think, you know, many would agree, you know, the important fabric in society that, you know, education is, right, especially in, you know, modern, fortunate countries that we live in, you know, how crucial and, you know, sometimes unfortunately we take for granted. But on top of that, just thinking about, you know, how much effort and time and, you know, resources and thought process and caring people are behind those, right? You know, obviously we think of the, the frontline teachers and the staff that do amazing work in there too. And then there's a the support staff like yourself behind that that allows them to do their work as well. So that's incredible to hear that story, Paul, and, you know, hear more why you do what you do. We're delighted to play a a small part in that, but uh, it's really that passion, I think, that we see in our users all the time that really drive us here at Samdesk as well to be the best versions of ourselves. And that reminder, you know, just remen- you know, mentioning Uvalde and just other sorts of situations, it just reminds us the, the ever, you know, presence, you know, and, and crucial work that needs to be ongoing and continues to be ongoing. So thanks very much for that, Paul. That's incredible to hear and thank you for what you do. So let's unpack, you know, some of the, you know, that there a little bit, right? So you you kind of hit on this a little bit before, but you know, tell us about how your role kind of supports the overall mission. I think at, at Fulton County, right? You know, why is it so important? You know, we we have the big you know top headline you know examples. You know, that's really important to make sure that you know the worst never happens and be prepared. But I imagine there's a lot of the day to day component too of, of things that nobody you know really realizes well for on your side as well, Paul. Right? So. So how does you know you and your team you know what does the day to day look like? How does that you know kind of feed into the mission? at Fulton County School District. Yeah, so I do. It's a, it's a team, right? It does. It takes a team. It, you know, it takes a village, if you will, to, to, to ensure that we have the things in place every day to, 
Um, you know, our days start very early. You know, if you think about uh, uh, if you if you put a student on a school bus, just think that we've probably already been to that school bus. We've already cranked it up. Could be hour or almost two hours prior to that before we ever arrive to pick your student up, just because we have to go through those safety protocols and the checks on the school bus. You know, there's someone that has to arrive at the school very early to begin preparing food. So we have to make sure that they have an environment that's conducive to, you know, preparing a proper meal for students to, you know, to serve them that day when they get to school. Um, and then all the things that we do to, to get to school, uh, to, to make sure the day goes by and, and all of the things that happen there, you know, that uh, there's times kids get sick, there's times adults get sick. And so, you know, we deal with some of that in terms of response and making sure that we're providing for those needs. Um, we do have events that occur in schools. We have, uh, you know, fires that may occur in school, whether they're intentional or accidental. Things happen. Uh, popcorn has burned many times in, in many buildings across our country. Um, you know, most of that's just a bad smell and, and you know, all of those things. But, you know, there's other things that we have to work through um, as a school district to, you know, hopefully ensure that at the end of the day, we've, you know, if we go home and we can, you know, sit down and say, hey, you know, well done. We did good today. Let's do this again tomorrow. It goes towards that that mission, if you will, or that culture of how we do those things. Um, you know, not every day is a great day, but we try to make it a great day and try to learn from it so that tomorrow is, is even a better day. Um, and so all of those tools come into play. I, you know, if, um, you know, I, I think you might have seen the opportunity, had the opportunity to see my emergency operations center, but it really is a group piece of things, right? We, we're monitoring cameras, we're monitoring email, we're monitoring uh, tips and, you know, from a tip line, we're monitoring social media, we're monitoring all of these things. And it, it's an accumulation of all of those pieces that hopefully make us successful. And let's dig in there a little bit. So in the, in the kind of the, the central core where I, I think you and your, most of your team will sit, right, is that emergency operations center. So that's mission control for, for you guys. And you're monitoring all the things that are happening around you. And, and one thing that, you know, that we talk a lot about here a lot of our users and just hear from their industry, you know, you have cameras, you have the important kind of, you know, infrastructure that's required. You're looking for things that are happening, you know, inside your four walls, right? Those are the, that's the area that you control. Then there's the outside world of the, all the other things, right? That are, that are, you know, causing impact, right? And so, you know, we can unpack that a little bit, but yeah. So tell us the, you know, let's drill in on the emergency operations center. What is the, the mission and role of that function in particular amongst all the little things that you and your team are doing? Uh, what is the significance of the the EOC. Yeah, so absolutely. So if you think about emergency operations center in, in normal function, if you would, it's, uh, you know, we're watching, we're scanning, we're watching cameras, we're watching the feeds, we're watching local news you know, channels, uh, the social media side of all of these things are going on at the same time in a, in a very proactive way. So we want to look for things that might have a potential impact or cause an impact or you know, it can be anything in a, in a metro Atlanta area. You know, if you think about it that way, one one thing that might not even seem to be related, can have an impact that way. And so as we, we do that consistently through the day, and then when we get indications of something that has, has gone wrong, or maybe it's a bar alarm or something like that, then it gives us the ability to quickly react to that. Um, so we'll use fire as an example. If we get an indication of a fire alarm in a school building, of course, the primary role of the school is to evacuate. They get the kids out of the building. Well, our team then starts to look back into the building, utilizing our camera system to see if we see any evidence of smoke or flame, um, or if we see evidence of somebody pulling an alarm or something like that, that, that may have caused that event. And, and then even more so than that, if we begin to see that, then we can communicate directly with law enforcement or the fire department, if you will, to say, hey, this is a real fire. Um, you know, there's smoke in this part of the building or something like that. So it allows everybody to have much more of a coordinated response. Um, and it also kind of, you know, lines up things as you go through a process. And again, with the ultimate goal of if it's nothing and it maybe it was just the burn popcorn that we can solve for that, the kids can get back in the building and then learning continues. Very helpful. Uh, thanks, Paul. So I'd love to kind of shift and, and dig in a little bit deeper. So, you know, that's, you know, your, your mission, your mandate, some of the things that you're working on. You got the EOC in the center of that kind of coordinating and, and playing that crucial role. How does SAMDesk fit into that from, from your perspective? So SAMDesk, and I'm not just saying this, it is, it is really amazing because it, is, it allows me to do two things. I can, I can take a, um, a proactive approach and I can go look and see what's going on, or I can take a reactive approach when something happens. And I love the fact the way that I get these alerts 
on a daily basis that I'm able to go in and customize uh, very specific alerts, especially around you know geography and proximity to our schools. And it alerts me and, and it, it's incredibly useful, especially with things like even like, you know, like a water main break. I mean, the water main break, how does that impact me? Well, if the water main break is next to a school and the water gets shut off, uh, we've got food service that can be, you know, impacted. We've got uh, sanitation that can be, you know, become impacted. Uh, it just depends. And it, can, and it can layer itself. What was the reason for the, you know, for the water main break? And we can kind of dig deeper into those things. I would say it just allows, you know, a lot of peace of mind, right? You know, there's some things that I know that you're doing with SAMDESK that allow me to not have to focus on SAMDESK, but responsive to SAMDESK. And it kind of knocks on my door, if you will, with my cell phone and tells me something's happening. And, and I love that part about it because it's very proactive and to, to that degree, you know, but even more so sometimes you, you know, for me, it, you know, I'll, I'll open up the program and just take a little bit of a deeper dive because knowing what's going on in my community and other communities can certainly have an impact on what happens in our local schools. Yeah, because I think you have both sides of that, right, Paul? And I think we've talked about this in the past. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. You know, I think there's the, you know, external events that might not be on your own property, the water blind break, an armed robbery across the street. You know, one of our missions here at Sandbest that we talk a lot on the product side is we want to make sure that our customers have the feeling that we've got your back, right? You, you've got your day job, you've got your focus, right? You know, who's, you know, looking behind you should anything bubble up and try to surface that. So great example in the, in the water main break. But there are also, you know, more extreme things sometimes, unfortunately, that happen across the country or the world sometimes that do spill into your world, right? Yeah, and I, I'll give you a great example. Um, I would say it's been five years ago, maybe at this point, but um, there was an unfortunate plane accident that occurred um, on our perimeter highway 285, and it was nowhere even near us. The, the, you know, the plane went down near PDK Airport, Northeast Atlanta. Uh, we don't have any schools, probably 30 miles, you know, would be the closest school. Quickly began to identify that that's a challenge for us because all of a sudden they shut off the interstate. They closed the interstate down. Well, okay, again, we don't really have school buses on the interstate, so that doesn't impact us. But we quickly were able to recognize that once they start shutting down the highways, all of this traffic is going to be on the side streets, and that's where we do have schools. And so it enables us to quickly take some actions to say, we need to probably take a look at how this is going to impact transportation and getting kids home in proximity of that area, um, you know, even though it was close. And I tell you what, it was not more than an hour later, total gridlock. And so that allowed us that heads up about a plane crash that occurred on the opposite side of Atlanta, gave us the heads up and the foresight to be able to look forward and say, what do we need to be thinking about now? how it could impact us. And, and it, we get that every day. I mean, I, there's some type of an alert I get across SAMDESK every day that makes me think that way just because of that specific incident. That's, I think, the, often the power that we think about is, you know, this one little notification, right? It seems so insignificant at times when you just think about this little, this little ping, whether you're, you know, using it on your phone, your desktop or whatever, right? And, and sometimes, you know, you don't even want to see the platform. You don't even want to think about it, right? But it's, it's that that little notification can, you know, really trigger that response in your mind. And I think is the definition of a proactive approach, right? Because I think, you know, so many times we deal with corporate security teams or other kind of, you know, just, you know, safety teams or operational teams like yourself, right? Part of their mission is to get ahead of issues, right? You want to have the best available chance or the best possible chance, right, to, to get ahead of things. And sometimes when you see it on the six o'clock news on the after the fact, I mean, you know, you're, you're probably in the thick of it, right? Then you're in the gridlock, you're dealing with the issue, right? You you're now is stuck in traffic like everybody else, right? You, you've, you haven't had the opportunity to actually uh, get ahead of it. So I, I love those stories for that reason. So th those are those sorts of stuff too, but I imagine too, and I think, you know, um, you know, when you see incidents happening in school districts and other parts of the country though too, even though that's even further away, it might not impact you directly. I still imagine that must trigger some response for, you know, concerned parents or faculty on your side as well. So you're probably dragged into action, I'd imagine even if it's happening on the other side of the country. Yeah, very true. And, uh, and, and especially in the climate of uh, you know, the, the active shooters that we've seen uh, numerous occasions throughout this year where, uh, of the tragedies on different campuses. Um, you know, the, the way that impacts me the greatest is, is, called, is just information and knowledge, right? I, I'm not there. I'm not experiencing the tragedy that's occurring there, but it will begin to impact 
potentially the climate, right? So as we think about what happens, why it happened, but in, in many cases, even in just our neighboring districts, um, I've been able to, to, to utilize Sam Desk just simply by uh, when something happens, and I'll get the alert that a school in such and such a city or county is a lot down. Um, what I love about it is I can click on it instantly. I can begin to see pictures of it as people have seen you know, uh, put pictures into social media or text or things like that. Sometimes it's police departments. They're letting people know what's going on. That lets me know what's going on. So the good news about that is I can either follow up with it or begin to think about what we need to do to react to it just based on where it's at. So it's, it's been tremendously uh, advantageous, you know, from that perspective. And sometimes it's even greater than that. When you, when you think about, uh, from, from my side, a lot of times I'll look at it, and, and I don't know if this is the greatest way to do it, but I do it, but is the how important is it, right? If you start looking at the number of posts, if you will, or the number of pictures that are involved, um, that, that's a quick indication to me of just how serious this probably is. Um, you know, if, I would think that if it was just a fire with a popcorn in a microwave, you're not going to get more than maybe one thing about it. But if you start to see multiple postings and multiple pictures and multiple news services, you know, posting things on Twitter or whatever they may post things about the event, it, it to me, it escalates that up to say, well, I better take a deeper look into this and see how this might impact us. So it's not just the initial notification, it's the ongoing observation and watching what's going on and gaining that knowledge and intelligence back so that we can best you know, formulate if we need to respond and how we need to respond. So, Paul, let's rewind, you know, before Samdesk and, and sort of that, that transition and, and kind of, you know, what was, what was life like in that environment? You know, was it a team of people just hitting refresh constantly? Was it, you know, <laughs> playing constant catch up? You know, if, if you, if, if, <laughs> I don't know if that's a painful memory to think it's about. Bad. But no, well, it's what, bad. What, did, uh, what did life look like back then? And, and you know, and the reason we ask, I, I suspect that people are still living that way, and we're probably still seeing that kind of behavior from, you know, uh, security and response team. I will say this, it's horribly reactive. And what I mean by that is um, you're going to get some notice from some parent or someone that says somebody said, did whatever that may be, this is going on. And then, then you've, you've missed the opportunity to be reactive in a, in a proactive way you know, then you're just reactive, you know, so the, whether you're dealing with positive knowledge or not, you know, it's, it's, that's the challenge. You, you just don't know. So, I mean, it really was um, just refresh, you know, I mean, it's about finding those best pieces, right? Those best tools of, in this case, social media monitoring and, and then bridging these pieces together so that you have the most effective response that you have. So timing's everything, but that's, you know, that's kind of what it is. We see a lot of that too, and, and obviously, you know, we we're you know hopefully playing a, a a small role in this transition towards this kind of you know proactive of way. But it is something that we see, you know, a, a lot of Paul. Right? It is, you know, it's you know corporate security teams, you know, security, you know, security teams, operational teams, and and you know all the different job functions that kind of roll up into those similar things. A lot of refresh, right? A lot of looking at the six o'clock news, or you know. Uh, in your example, right, you probably don't want a parent to be the first one, you know, to be uh, aware of it because then you're on, you know, you're on your, your back, uh, you're on your, uh, not in your ready stance when they're calling you for information when they need it most, right? Yep. And so what, what do you think that transition has been like for folks like you in your, your industry, right? Because I think you are coming from a world and jump in where I'm, I'm wrong on perhaps, you know, some of my, my core assumptions here, but, you know, a lot of folks are looking at security cameras, access badges, and and that was the definition, I think, right, for for a lot of folks, by and large, right? And they're still very critical. I don't want to suggest that they're not a crucial component of it. But, you know, how do you, how have you seen that shift, right? Because now we also have parents looking at social media, right? So now we also have our, our stakeholders. We have other people also more aware of, of things that may or may not be a problem. And I'd imagine that must be a huge impact for you, for you and your industry, your colleagues, and the the job function itself must have changed significantly over the last five years with the ever presence of information. Yeah, it's an ongoing challenge to continue to look at how we can be innovative and uh, in our ways to you know be proactive about emergency preparedness, and um, you know it just continues to grow. But it, it it has if you if you take a look at the past five years, you know, and and the number of threats and tips and things like that that we you know, had students submitting or, or interacting with, and then the ones we get today, uh, it's, it's dramatically increased. Absolutely. 
Great, Paul. Well, I think that's kind of, you know, gone through uh, a lot of the things that, that I had on, on, you know, my agenda to chat through. So thanks so much for your, your thoughts and insights. Anything on your side, Paul, that you would like to add? Well, I just encourage everyone to, uh, you know, continue to explore the, the, you know, the options that are out there. Uh, we all own safety and security everywhere we're at. And I would, uh, I would empower you to make that decision and know that decision in, in your own school or your own business or environment, wherever you're at to uh, enable and empower your staff to know that because the, they, if they see something, say something has been a, a thing from the DHS for a long time, but it's true. We, we need to make sure that we're a society that's ready to step up and, and let people know when things are happening so that we, we all remain safer. And, uh, and I appreciate the efforts you know, that Sam Desk has put into its programming over the years because that continually in, you know, enables us to have greater access to technology and greater access to, uh, in this case, helping keep 90,000 kids safe on a daily basis. So thank you, James. Well, thank you, Paul, and, and your team and others for being at the forefront, I think, of, of a, a really crucial, you know, change and, and, and shift change, I think, within the, you know, security landscape, right? And, and I think you, you know, put it very eloquently today, Paul, from, you know, that reactive by default state uh, versus moving towards, you know, a, a proactive uh, approach. So thanks for letting us be part of of your journey and thank you for the work that you do paul for all the the students and faculty that that you look after and all the families that that impacts uh you know within your area and beyond we really appreciate everything you do so thanks for chatting with us paul all right have a good day